Dear students, welcome to the second part of the dental pulp practical session. In this part, we will be discussing the blood vessels and the nurse supply of the dental pulp. So as we discussed in the theoretical lecture, the neurovascular bundle which has actually which contains the nerve and the blood vessels come from the apical foramen of the tooth entering the root and then um, having branches or giving branches in the crown. If we uh, make some special staining like the Indian ink to the tooth, we can detect the uh, this capillary uh, branching of the uh, blood vessels. Um, the, the blood supply comes as a trunk from the apical foramen and then uh, giving branches in the root and the most profound branches branching is seen in the crown area. This branching actually becomes um, more more profuse under the odontoblastic uh, layer making this capillary plexus that is called the sub capillary plexus. It's called after its uh, position, the sub capillary plexus. This plexus, of course, has anastomosis and looping of arterioles and venules, with the, uh, some of the capillaries going between the odontoblasts. And these capillaries are fenestrated and um, only coated by basement membrane to make the perfusion faster and easier. In histological sections, these capillaries are either cut in longitudinal section as we can see here, and also this shows how uh, the capillaries branch, or they are um, cut in cross section as you can see here giving this shape of circles. They are either arterioles or venules. You have already studied in the um, general histology that arterioles have a thick wall that is because of the smooth, smooth muscles encircling, encircling it, but the venule has a thin wall of uh, one layer of cells around it. Uh, these details are going to be seen again in the um, part number three talking about the dental, uh, dental pulp core so now I'm just giving some introduction for it uh, don't be afraid uh, these are only introduction um, slides and the details are going to be repeated again in the regions of the dental pulp as you can see here this is an arteriole in the central pulp there is an endothelial cells uh, covering the lumen while smooth muscle cells or muscle cells around the uh, endothelial cells making the wall of the arteriole thicker than the venule. As you can see here also endothelial cells in the lumen and muscle cells in the periphery. If you are asking yourself what are these structures here, we are going to discuss them in a minute. But because we have already seen this um, slide, I'm going to give you some introduction. So we said that the uh, neurovascular bundle is closely associated to each other. So usually when you see an arteriole, a big one like this one, uh, always expect to see uh, nerve bundles with it. So this um, Arteriole is cut in cross section, so these also circles are nerves cut in uh, cross section. If you find a black circle around the nerves, these are myelin sheath. And some of the nerves are not myelinated, so you don't see these black circles around them. Remember the uh, theoretical lecture where we discussed that uh, there is myelinated and non myelinated. Uh, nerve endings and nerves in the uh, dental pulp and this is how do they look in a cross section especially if we take a cross section of a neurovascular bundle because as I have said later in the coronal part and in the periphery of the uh, uh, roots the neurovascular bundle actually branches so um, you can see nerves by themselves or blood vessels by themselves 
spot in the center of the root and at the floor of the pulp most of the time you see uh, a section containing uh, an arteriole with a nerve bundles or nerve uh, nerves like this together and a, and a close relationship forming the bundle what are we going also to see uh, we got to see some lymphatic vessels inside the dental pulp. So we finished discussing the blood vessels. Now we are going to discuss the lymphatics before we enter the uh, discuss before we discuss the uh, nerve supply. Lymphatic vessels are not easy to see and they are not easy to differentiate from venules. So in cross section they look like venules, like thin walled empty uh, uh, tubes. Uh, venules have blood cells inside them, but that's not uh, always the case. Um, so it's not easy to say that this is a lymphatic or a, a lymphatic vessel or a venule. But as you can see here, this is a venule with some blood of it with it or within it. So it's easier to recognize. Here in this section, as you can see, this is easy to recognize because this is across uh, this blood vessel is cutting. Uh, longitudinally but you can see the blood cells inside this lymphatic vessel is cut longitudinally so it's easier to uh, actually recognize because you can see this is a thin wall and there is something inside that is not blood if you are asking yourself so why this is not a nerve we can look here and see the nerve the nerve always has this combination of uh, violet and uh, light violet colors dark and light violet colors that is woven like wool so this is the characteristic feature of how does the nerve look in the dental pulp always it looks like a woven wool with uh, light and dark uh, purple colors woven together so this nerve is cut longitudinally also the lymphatic vessel and the blood vessel see how these three look different than each other and remember, all these details are going to be discussed again in details when we discuss the um, regions of the dental pulp. The nervatic supply comes with the blood supply from the apical foramina and starts to branch until the most branching happens in the coronal area. It's composed of myelinated here uh, in color in dark green and unmyelinated in uh, light green colors. Actually, under the uh, odontoblastic area, especially in the crown, you can see a branching of this uh, nerve supply, of this nerve plexus, making a big nerve plexus sub-odontoblastic that is most seen in the crown. It's called the nerve plexus of Rashko, as you can see also here. This uh, nerve branches uh, in the subodontoblastic uh, plexus called Rashko or Rashkov are really thin, can go inside between the odontoblast and continue, continue into the dentinal tubules. They are not myelinated inside the tubules, which makes uh, facilitates faster uh, induction and transmission of signals. As you can see in this section, the, these um, nerve terminals can go inside between odontoblasts. And if we take a section here from the dentinal tubules and look at it, we can see the odontoblastic process with several nerve endings in a tubule. So here we see four or five, two here, three here, and so on. They are not myelinated inside the tubules. If we take a section from a nerve uh, bundle, we will see the uh, nerves with the myelinated and unmyelinated nerves. I told you about these black sheath around nerves, which are myelin that is formed or secreted by the Schwann cell. You took that in general histology, while sometimes the Nerves are non-myelinated, as you can see here. How do these look under the microscope in histological sections? Usually you can see a bundle like this, composed of a nerve and an arteriole. 
in high magnification this is the nerve cut in cross section it looks like wool as I have said before it looks like woven wool with dark and light violet colors inside of each other a lot of cell nuclei of course this is the arteriole with this thick wall also another arteriole here thick wall with a lumen as you can see here you can see a venule So, right now we have discussed the uh, blood supply to the uh, dental pulp, the nervatic supply of the dental pulp, and uh, how both are actually making a plexi under the odontoplastic uh, layer. And we have discussed the lymphatic supply to the dental pulp. In the next uh, part we are going to discuss the different regions seen under microscope for the dental pulp as you can see the dental pulp is not homogeneous on the peripheries and that's what are we going to discuss in the next part see you in the next part